Baltimore podcast. I'm Amanda, also known as Little Panda 518. I would like to thank all the returning viewers for coming back, and if you're new, checking me out this week. Thanks for checking me out. Um, let's see where to start. Once again, it's been a couple weeks since I recorded, but I think with life right now, I'm going to set myself on a schedule of I will for sure have one episode a month, and if I get another one in there, yay me. <laughs> So I really would like to thank everyone for sticking with me because I know my recording schedule has been fairly crazy here lately, but hopefully we'll get back to where I'm on a good schedule. It just may take a little bit of time to get there. And I, yeah, I'm still working on light things, so nice shadow going on here. Um, I think I may just bite the bullet and possibly order a studio light just to kind of make that a little bit easier. And the one thing you will notice is I have a new background which is very nice. I have an actual table now, so I don't have a folding table that shakes every time I sew on it, so that was pretty fantastic. And that's kind of another reason why it's taken me a bit to record in between. Um, I was working on, I actually got this table from a friend to borrow for the time being, and one weekend we went and got it, but I didn't have a chance to get it put up, and then it took a whole other weekend to get craft room rearranged, because where I was going to put it, it wasn't going to fit. And so I had to rearrange everything, and I had to have the hubs help, and yeah, what I'm looking at is a train wreck and a complete disaster of a mess. But once I get the craft room put together on the other side of the camera, I will kind of give you guys a tour around and see what I've kind of fixed up around here. So we will we'll eventually get there, a little bit at a time for me. So that's kind of what's been holding me up. This is going to be very, very light on the knitting. Um, test knits have taken about 99% of my time, so I didn't even bother bringing the yarns in to show y'all. Um, once I'm able to show those to y'all, then I'll bring in I'll bring in the finished objects and the yarn and tell you all about them. But in the meantime, I figured well, I'll keep teasing you with yarn when I can't show you what I'm knitting with it. So with that being said, I do have a couple finished objects. There was one shawl um, that I I don't ever remember showing you guys on camera. I think I finished this during my hiatus that I kind of took back between the holidays. And I knit this uh, with my friend Tanya. So we she cast on. I'm like, oh, that's pretty. So I'm going to cast on too. So this is the, I'm just going to kind of start at one end because it's it started really, really narrow. And then it just kind of got bigger and bigger and this got really long but I had fun knitting it so just kind of keep going through so it's kind of like a grady kind of gradation from well it's not really a gradient but it's three colors because it's gray teal and purple this is yarn that was dyed by my amazing friend love knots on her sparkle base so I'll see if and yeah, don't mind the cat hair because this has been sitting out. So, see if you guys can see. There you go. You guys can see some of the sparkle there. So, this is the Zamboni pattern. Like I said, it was a super easy knit, and I'm pretty sure that you guys haven't seen this. I don't even think you guys saw me working on this one. So, I kind of like the, not, the long, narrow ones because I can just kind of wrap around and kind of zhuzh around. And, have a nice pop of color around my neck so yeah there's that one and then my other finished object which also will need to go around my neck if I don't choke myself out first which that there we go so that's that one which I don't know who it's by but it'll be in the show notes and then my other finished object I joined Jen of the uncreative crafter podcast and her poop along which was pretty much a unofficial, officially hitchhiker and any yarn kind of cow. I did not use the unicorn poop from Love Knots. Um, I have, I already had this on hand when I wanted to get started. So this is, let me see if I can get a good, good color of it. Oh yeah, there we go. It's been kind of wadded up, which is a very bad way of treating your knits, but yeah. This is Juliana Fibers in the Iris colorway, and it's also on her sparkle base. So this is my Hitchhiker by Martina Bain, 
and I knit mine on twos because I didn't have a, a four that was free and I think the pattern called for a three and I like the fabric that the two gave and it's still super squishy and I've worn this to work a couple times and I've gotten quite a few compliments on it so this is another kind of long narrow one that I can zhuzh around the neck which yeah there we go and it's kind of tucked in it actually matches my outfit today pretty well so I ended up getting 45 teeth but I think that is huge part of you know maybe missing one of those knit front back together somewhere along the lines and because I did it on the two so I think that's kind of why I got some more teeth but that is my other finished knitting object um Oh, I did finish two more hexi puffs, but I can show them to y'all later because I didn't bring them in here. The other finished object I have is not knitting, but it is sewing. So I have, I have finished a little notions pouch. I love this fabric. See if you can, yeah, there we go. Love the fabric. So I will be, now that I have a sturdy table and you can see my sewing machines right here. So now that she's back out and running, I will be able to get some more sewing done. So I'm so excited to kind of get back at that. And I have a big plan coming up for that. So keep posted. What I'm working on, I have kind of one of those that I can show you in my bag from Love Knots because Rachel's awesome. And so, yeah. I had free needles, so I cast on, whoops, how did, don't mind me as yarn is tangled, there we go. So this will probably look familiar because last podcast that I showed you, I showed you that I had a finished pair of socks out of this yarn. This is the Hummingbird colorway of the Knit Picks Felici yarn. So it's the teal, purple, pink, and purple. So I've got a little bit left because I used roughly 50 grams of what I had with the other pair of socks. And these are, if you can notice a little bit, they are a little bit smaller. So these are my Izzy socks. Um, the other socks that I knit out of this colorway are going to my niece, Mackenzie. And these socks are going to Isabel, who is my little five-year-old niece. And so five-year-olds have itty-bitty feet, even ittier bittier than mine. So I have, I got those casted on, but then like I said, test knits 99% of the time. So that's where kind of all my attention has been. I did take a break, a little bit of a break from the test knit yesterday to kind of get some sewing done. So that was nice. Oh, I'm kind of stash enhancement, which I just realized I totally left something out in the other room. But, oh, that was loud. Sorry, y'all. I got my first ever rotary cutter because I hated, I hate cutting fabric with scissors. So now I have that and I cut that on a sale at Joann's. And then I finally, which it's clear so y'all probably won't be able to see it, but you'll get the gist. I got one of the big like rulers that quilters use. So I can use it as a ruler and a straight edge. And I found this on sale for like $10 at my Tuesday morning store which I love that store and I am always going there. And then I also got, it's a, what is, it's the 16 by 11 inch, 17 by 11, 11 by 17. Yes, that's the numbers I was going for. Um, matte and it is self healing, so even better. And another $10 score at my Tuesday mornings. So if you can't tell, I love going to Tuesday mornings because I get some amazing deals from there. And sometimes I possibly spend a little bit too much money. Um, I did get another stash enhancement in the mail this week, which I forgot to bring them in here, but I will pop in a picture. I ordered some stitch markers from Mika Mika. Her shop is on Etsy and it's M-E-K-A-M-I-K-A. -A and they're absolutely fantastic. Um, I love doing yoga, which I haven't been able to do it here recently just because of health and body stuff going on, but I still love it. And it's, they're the yoga chakra stitch markers. So they are absolutely adorable and I can't wait until I have a project that I can put them on. 
And any projects that I didn't bring in and show you that I've shown you in the past is because I haven't worked on them. So no progress. They don't make the podcast. So I kind of think that is the knitting crafting kind of ordeal. Like I said, super short on that stuff. But I did want to bring in a couple other things. Oh, I guess another stash enhancement I have since I have talked to y'all last, which my tea is still very warm. I got a new teacup. So let's keep calm and drink tea. So I was at my knit group two weeks ago. And you know, we go to this little tea shop that's run by people from Scotland. And she always has her teacup that she takes around and kind of has on the counter and whatnot as she's drinking her tea. And hers is a red cup and it says keep calm and drink tea and white lettering and everyone wanted to buy her cup. And she found some and got them stocked in her store. So I saw that as I was checking out two weeks ago and I'm like, that has to be mine. I don't care the cost, put it in my bag. So I have a new teacup, which I'm quite proud of. And today I am indulging in some maple, not maple, it is mango peach tea which I made it right before I came in here, so it is still incredibly steaming hot. So yeah, it's gonna sit there for a little bit. But another thing, since knitting was short, I wanted to bring up is I am a stationary and pen fiend. And so I wanted to kind of bring in my favorite pens because they kind of go along with all the crafty stuff. And I like color coding things. So in my planner, when I remember to use it, Everything is color coded and my favorite pins are the Stradler, I think is how they're pronounced, the fine liners. So they are a 0.3 millimeter and of course I had to buy the entire rainbow pack. We'll go that way so you can see them all. And it's really nice because the way the package sets is they can set up on a table and you can just pull whatever colors you want out because I am the crazy one that keeps them in rainbow order on how they came in the package. So I love using these and I've even thought about using them in my adult coloring book. I may go between these and the colored pencils, which I haven't had a chance to sit down and color. I've been wanting to, but knitting has kind of taken over. And that's kind of my life until the test knits are done, which I can finally, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. So, and I'm, I'm enjoying the knits. I'm just ready to kind of knit on something else. Because my attention has been on the test knits for quite some time and I'm ready to cast on a few other things because I have a super bad case of starditis but I'm being good I'm finishing the test knits before I cast on anything else and it is very warm in here so we're gonna take this off because it is February but February in Arkansas also means that apparently it can be 70 degrees outside so yesterday I went out to knit group and I didn't wear a jacket, didn't have to wear one. I did wear long sleeves because I knew the little tea shop sometimes gets a little bit chilly. But I could have probably gone out in a t-shirt and been just fine yesterday. But I do get cold in air conditioning, so. And places around here apparently feel that it's okay to turn on air conditioning in February when it's 70 degrees. But this week coming up, we are gonna be dipping back down into the 50s, I believe. So, don't mind me for a minute. I don't get to enjoy my mango peach tea very often because it's a black tea, so it does have caffeine. And yeah, trying to cut back on caffeine by doctor's orders. But I'm splurging today, so they can the doctors can deal with it. Let's see. You will notice kind of behind me I have my stack of fabric that I've kind of gotten over the course of the last uh, trips to the craft store. Because now not only do I buy yarn when I go to a craft store, I Apparently buy fabric now too. So my fabric stash is greatly growing so I need to get in here and I think once I get this recorded and edited and put together I'll be back in here cutting up fabric for some more bags for the shop. And of course I think you can see it better now which his head's kind of cut off but I do have my panda canvas up there and if I move them oh. My hat and socks that I finished last time are back here. I've got my some of my stuffy pandas kind of sitting back there joining me on the podcast. So, let's see. Oh, the other thing I wanted to cover. So, I watch a ton of podcasts in my free time, which there's not really a whole lot between working and VKNing with the girls, 
which if you can and if you don't know is a virtual knit night. The, between the group of ladies that I hang out with, we have a scheduled VKN from Sunday night all the way through Friday night. And most of the times we have an impromptu on Saturday during the day, Sunday during the day, just kind of whenever we talk pretty much 24 seven. So we've got those VKNs. I get home from work and I log right on and I'm typically on until I go to bed at night. But in my spare moments, I do watch some podcasts in there. I watch all the girls in the group and then there's a couple others that I stay caught up on. And here recently I've been catching a couple new ones which um, I did want to talk about that. One of my f new favorites that I found, her name is Vero, and she's from the Along the Lanes podcast. Oh, excuse me. She is a Canadian living in the UK, and she has, she's super energetic. She's awesome, so you should totally go check her out. Uh, she's got about 16 or 17 episodes, I believe, and I totally went and binged all of them from episode one all the way up, because that's what I do. Um, I started watching, some of the girls have been talking about Inside Number 23, so I started watching her, and I've caught a couple of her episodes. So she's also over in the UK area. I think I'm drawn to the international podcast, just because... I like listening to the, dif the different accents, so that's always nice. And during work, I've been catching some audio podcasts, so I've been listening to Curious Handmaids. Um, wow, my brain is failing me. Of course, I listen to the Knit Girls every week, and Skein and Abel, which Skein and Abel is, Skein and Abel and Knit Girls, they're both out of California. And what else? I kind of think those are all the ones that I've caught this week, but with listening, it works since I'm kind of better caught up on what I'm do what I'm supposed to be doing for my job. I can kind of focus on some other things as well. So this past week, I have started listening to the Girl on the Train audiobook because I work in a cubicle and sometimes the hubbub around me kind of gets a little bit distracting. So I'll put in earbuds and listen to a book and. I have maybe 11 or 12 chapters or so into Girl on the Train, which I'm really enjoying it so far. I can definitely tell there's possibly going to be some twists or turns coming up that I'm totally not expecting, and I really like books like that. Um, when I read a book and I can totally tell what's coming, it kind of makes it boring. That kind of happened to me with Gone Girl. Everyone, there was such a hubbub and vibe, uh, vibe, of uh, hype is the word I was going for there, um, was so much about the book where I went to read it, but everyone talked about, oh, there's this awesome twist in it. Well, I got to reading and I was like two chapters in and I could already tell what the twist was gonna be. So it kind of made the book a little bit boring for me, which it's a really good book, but yeah, telling me that there's gonna be a twist in the book, uh, nine times out of 10, I can typically call what it's gonna be. So, and speaking of books, I also just finished reading the first Outlander book on my Kindle. Um, I ended up catching the books when they were all bundled, the seven books bundled together for $1.99 on the Amazon Kindle, uh, in the Amazon Kindle store. So I nabbed those up and I have made it through the first book. It was one of those, since they're all lumped together in one book, I didn't know how close to the end I was getting since... All seven books are part of the percentage so 10% in and I have finished the first book so I'm taking a little bit of a hiatus from the Outlander books and I am reading the Tale of Two Cities uh, the group of girls that I talk with um, we are kind of having an informal read-along which I think two of the other girls have started the book which I am not very far in at all um, I typically read for about 20 or 30 minutes each night before I go to bed just to kind of help my brain wind down. So I've got that going on and the hubs and I have hit up Goodwill so I have a whole stack of books that I can see out of the corner of my eye over there. Uh, we like hitting up their books because Goodwill you can get books for like 50 cents to two bucks a piece which is pretty fantastic. And that's kind of my bookcase over there. Yep. Yeah. 
storage kind of reorganized, I'm going to actually be recording the other direction so you guys can see the pretty yard behind me. But like I said earlier, it's a complete mess and all you would see is yarn shoved in totes, stacked up weird and yarn shoved in front of books and on top of books and I think the husband's guns are sitting in that corner still. So like I said, I have a lot of work to get done in here. There was some, the other thing I was going to talk about, I meant to put this at the beginning of the podcast, but my dear friends that I VKN with, I, almost all of them have podcasts and it really pains me to see when other podcasters get, you know, get hurt or, you know, what's the other word I'm looking for? I don't really know, but this happened to Book of Stitcher, which if y'all don't watch her I don't care if you pause this and go watch her and come back later, but you need to be watching her podcast too. And someone had, I'm hoping it was no one of the knitting community. I'm as bad as it is. I was really hoping it was just a troll being awful, but they flagged one of her videos for nudity, which come on people. It was a project bag and she was not nude. It was a little mermaid and she had pasties on and Jeanette covered it up the entire time so there was nothing shown. Yeah, people are stupid. And uh, I really hate when people treat people like that because just because it's the internet doesn't give you the power of anonymity. No, that's not the word. You can't be, they're anonymous online so that gives people the power to think that they can treat people how they want and that is not right. So I think Jeanette needs some extra lovings over at the Bookish Stitcher podcast. So hop on over to her channel and give her a thumbs up on her videos too, just to kind of give her a little bit more encouragement of getting over that. Um, Cause having a video flagged on YouTube and having to go through the process of having it unflagged, I am sure is not fun. And yeah, so go give Jeanette the Bookish Stitcher some extra love this week. And I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up because I don't think I have anything else for you. So I will catch y'all hopefully in two weeks, maybe a month. We'll see how life works out. But with that, keep on stitching, y'all.